Hello everyone, here is number 341 of Divine Intimacy. Spiritual Paternity and Maternity. Act of the Presence of God. Oh my God. Unite me to yourself by bond, by a bond of fervent love. Grant that by this union I may bring you to many souls. Meditations number one. God has bestowed on man the great honor of willing that he be his collaborator in a work which is proper to himself. As God which belongs essentially to him alone, that is, the communication of life and not only of natural life but of supernatural life also. On the material level, which we may call the plan of creation, the fathers and mothers of families are his collaborators. Having been entrusted with the high mission of communicating life to new human beings, of rearing and educating them for the glory of God. On the supernatural level, that of redemption, God's collaborators are all those who, by dedicating themselves to the apostolate, have an even more noble and vast mission, that of communicating to men the life of grace without which they are unhappy creatures. And in a certain sense, are unable to attain eternal life. In his encyclical Menti Nostrae, Pope Pius XII declares, "The priest is the organ of the communication and increase of life in the mystical body of Christ. Far from being the gift and the office of paternity, because." of his celibacy, the priest increases them innumerably, immeasurably, since if he does not beget children for this passing life on earth, he begets them for the life which is heavenly and eternal. In due proportion the same can be said of every apostle, for the final end of the apostolate is precisely to engender souls to, to the supernatural life. My little children, of whom I am in labour again, until Christ be formed in you, exclaimed St. Paul in a letter to the Galatians. Every apostle has an equal right to feel himself both father and mother of the souls for whom he sacrifices himself entirely, a paternity and a maternity which are reflections of, or rather, a sharing in the paternity of God. In the natural order, God has arranged that fecundity, the source of life, should be the result of the union of two creatures. In the supernatural order also, fecundity is born of union, but of an immeasurably superior and holy spiritual union, the union of the soul with God. The more a soul is united to God, by love, the greater its participation in his inexhaustible fecundity which has for its end the communication of the divine life to men. Therefore, consecrated souls who have renounced natural fecundity have, have not impoverished and stiffed their lives their lives.
condemning them to sterility sterility through their union with God. These souls have been raised to a paternity to a maternity of a far su superior nature. To be a father number two to be a father or mother is not limited to those who work in the external apostolate. It extends also to those who have dedicated themselves to the contemplative life. Although contempt completely separated from the world, St. Therese of the Child Jesus felt an over-increasing spiritual maternity grow in her heart. And in the solitude of Carmel, she writes, To be your spouse, O Jesus, and by my union with you, to be the mother of souls. This is the fundamental aspiration of her spirit. The ideal that attracted her, sustaining and urging her on her life of continual and painful immolation. She is ever con conscious that she must give herself, sacrifice herself for souls. Like a loving mother, she must be constantly at the complete disposal of her children. One day, seeing a novice sauntering listlessly to her work, the saint teasingly reproved her. Is that the way people hurry when they have children and are obliged to work to procure them food? The earnest apostle ever conscious of having children to nourish realizes that he should spend his whole life for them, that he has to maintain them by his toil, his prayers, his weariness, and above all by his love, precisely from love from the same love which unites him to God does he draw the strength to sacrifice himself for them and draws even that even that spiritual fecundity by which he becomes God's collaborator in communicating to them The life of grace as love increases union with God becomes deeper and this in turn gives rise to greater fecundity and more power in communicating divine life to an immense number of souls who can estimate the extent of the spiritual paternity and maternity of the saint. There is no interior life, no real sanctity, which is not crowned with the aureole of spiritual paternity or maternity. But in the natural realm, the mother brings Force her children in sorrow. So, in the supernatural order, there is no paternity or maternity of souls without suffering. It was by dying on the cross that Jesus brought forth to divine life. From him, we learn that if we wish to share in his redemption, redemptive work, we must not fear either persecutions or mockeries or scourgings.
or thorns or nails on the cross or the cross we must be ready to give for souls and all that we have in our even our very life that they may be nourished with our blood colloquy O eternal father you cannot fail to know that poor sinners are your creatures and belong to you by the supreme title of creation O eternal son blessed king you cannot deny that these wretched beings belong to you since you gained them for yourself by the incomparable title of redemption listen to me O most obedient son listen to me and show yourself propiti propitious to my prayers because where I present myself because when I present myself to the eternal father with the pledge of your blood and your pressure he cannot drive me he cannot drive me far away from him without first hearing my request come to my aid O eternal Holy Spirit no matter how abominable these sinners may be by the enormity of their sins they still belong to you since you made them yours by admitting them to a share in your goodness O oh Lord my only comfort is to see souls converted to you and for this alone I suffer patiently your absence if you do not grant me comfort what can I do do not drive me away most merciful Lord you are resolved and already disposed to hear me since in your compassionate glance towards me I perceive clothed with your light my spirit my spiritual sons and daughters my brothers and sisters and all those whom I strive to win you day by day May they always remain faithful to you. O Sovereign and Eternal Father, I recommend to you my beloved children, whom you have confided to me. I beg of you to visit them with your grace, to make them live as dead to the world, that they may enjoy clear and perfect light. Be united and be united among themselves with the sweet bond of charity I pray you O eternal father that none of them be taken from my hands and I beg you to pardon us all our offenses I offer and commend to you my beloved children because they are my very soul thank you for listening to support me further Please like, share, subscribe, comment, and God bless. Thank you.